how to install Quick Connect fuel line fittings and Quick Connect vacuum line fittings to plastic fuel and vacuum line. This will enable you to make a new fuel line or new vacuum line or to repair damaged fuel and vacuum lines, avoiding having to buy expensive manufacturer spare parts. Nothing lasts forever and fuel and vacuum lines are no exception. Fuel lines are easily damaged when changing fuel filters or pumps and vacuum lines around the engine can become hard and brittle due to heat and aging. Before we dive into the job though, a word about parts and materials. This type of fitting and pipe work is available in food safe as well as fuel safe versions. But it's very important that you buy the correct type of part, fuel safe parts. The pipe in particular must be PA11 or PA12 which will be on the pipe markings or it won't last long at all. I'll link to a suitable source of parts in the description. The example I'm using today is my Saab 93 brake booster vacuum pipe. These go hard and brittle with age, especially on the V6 engine version. And then they split and break. And of course, you lose your brake assistance and your engine runs rough, thanks to the vacuum leak. Let's get to putting one together. An important word tools wise, for cutting the pipe to length, use a craft knife with a brand new, very sharp blade. Cut the pipe on a board and with a single stroke, cut the pipe to length and cut it square. Do not be tempted to use uh, side cutters, they will just crush the pipe. Now for holding the pipe, I bought myself a cheap flaring kit. And one of the pieces in the flaring kit is this pipe holder and it holds the pipe absolutely perfectly. It was only about 12 quid. So fit the pipe in with just enough length to go down the fitting and tighten up. Now you will need one of these. There is absolutely no way you could hold a small pipe like this made of plastic in your hands. Now I'm gonna push this one way valve onto this piece of pipe, which is gonna go in that way. But I don't want to just push on that end there. I, I risk damaging or snapping off this barbed part portion or, or even just splitting it and not knowing it. So I'm gonna use a deep but small sized socket to put over that so that I can push on the main body. And to do the pushing, I'm using a dead cheap cork gun. Before you put your fitting in, put a little bit of silicone grease on the uh, barbed end. It only needs a smear. And of course, if you're fitting a one-way valve, make sure that you know which way it flows. Usually, they have an arrow on the body which points in the direction of flow. If it's a vacuum pipe, the direction of flow will be towards the inlet manifold or vacuum pump. If it's a fuel pipe, then of course the direction of flow will be in the direction that you want the fuel to go. Put the pipe in its pipe holder at the end of the gun so that it's held against the end stop. Hold the fitting into place, take up the slack, making sure that your pipe and all the fittings are absolutely square and in line. Use your opposite hand to keep them that way because this is a cheap gun, it's quite flexible. Squeeze the trigger, which you might have to do two or three times and hey presto, the pipe fitting is in. When you're doing this type of combination fitting, something similar to this, use your socket to push on that shoulder there or this shoulder here. Don't push just straight on this end here. You risk distorting the end, which could damage the O-rings inside these fittings when you're clipping the uh, parts back together. And if it's a straight fitting with the barbs in a straight line, you can just put the end of the fitting flat on your plate. So straight fittings are fairly straightforward. <laughs> See what I did there? And that's what we ended up with as one part of the pipe. Things, however, become a little more difficult when you're wanting to do angle fittings, whether they're 45 or 90. This is a simple angle fitting that's just gonna push fit into the rubber grommet in my uh, brake booster. But I need to connect the pipe to the end of it. So what I've found with this particular size because we're using ID6 as our uh, barb size, uh, internal pipe size, it just so happens that this fitting clips nicely into a 15 millimeter copper pipe clip. For this 45 and 90 degree angle fitting, I found sockets to be a good holder. For the 45 degree, I used a 32 millimeter socket. Put the fitting down into the socket at an angle against one of the flats and the other side of the fitting against the opposite flat such that it's held with the barbed portion parallel to the socket and straight. Obviously you, you may need a different size of socket if your fittings are a different size. And bring the fitting to your pipe 
with a nice big socket like this it makes it a little easier to use your other hand to keep it all square and straight perfect opportunity to show you what happens if you don't get it all perfectly square and straight you just crush the pipe I've done this successfully several times now that I'm trying to do it on camera it doesn't want to go in straight does it if you've got a professional gun professional guns are a lot more rigid and I uh, would be a lot easier to use because keeping it rigid and straight is very important and to that end something I have found to be of great benefit in my uh, practice sessions with this was tie wrapping the pipe holder to the end of the caulking gun it saves you a lot of work with your hands in this case I'm going to put the 45 degree fitting on don't forget your bit of lube fit it into the socket I tie wrap the pipe holder such that the pipe is off centre because the barbed portion of the fitting is off centre. Bring it to bear, in it goes. There we go, fitted. For the 90 degree fitting, I'm using a 38 millimetre socket. But otherwise, the technique is exactly the same, whatever, whatever you're using as your uh, adapter. And hey presto. In this instance, I managed to get a little kink in the pipe there, but that isn't going to... Uh, bother it at all because we're only uh, using this for a vacuum pipe so as long as it's solid that's fine that would probably not be a problem even if it was a fuel pipe if it was a fuel pipe I'd probably do that piece again you might find that you do get a few kinks on a few goes but all you're doing is uh, using up a little bit of pipe so no great shakes really still probably an awful lot better than spending several hundred pounds on the uh, original equipment spare part if you are fitting one-way valves into your uh, new assembly then fit the pipes to both sides of the one-way valve before you cut them to length and fit the end fittings having done the first side to do the second side choose a larger socket that will fit against the flat side of the body but otherwise the technique is much the same as before by using that socket you can press against the socket like so keep it all square with your other hand and in we go and hey presto we've got our valve part way along our length of pipe now we can cut it to length at the each end and fit our end fittings using our other adapters if you really struggle with pushing it home all in one go fit your pipe into your holder so that you've only got half the amount of pipe you need sticking out push the fitting halfway in then pull it out the rest of the way from the holder and re-tighten and push it a second time I found that that method works quite well your pipe will come to you coiled up and it takes a set of course but if you want to straighten it out boil a pan of water or the kettle with the uh, lid open hold it straight and just allow the steam to waft round it for a few seconds to warm the pipe up take it out of the steam hold it in position for maybe 15 or 20 seconds and then here you go if you want to make it shaped which I do in this instance I want to get about a 45 degree bend there so just warm that up hold it for 15-20 seconds the same again here I'm not actually going to attempt to replicate the pipe I'm replacing it exactly just putting these two pipes in means that I can give it a slightly different route around the engine to what the original pipe does now you could use a heat gun to do that particularly if you've got a complex shape that you want to give it but do be very very careful with the heat gun don't get the pipe too hot if you do melt the pipe then then you'll ruin it completely just get it warm enough to just be able to give it a little bit of shape and then let it cool and when you do come to assemble your new pipe onto your car lubricate the o-rings in here with a q-tip and some silicon grease never put o-rings on dry push fit and of course don't forget to put anything back that you had to uh, disassemble to get access and if like on this Saab the original pipe goes behind a heat shield then make sure to put the new pipe behind the heat shield that's there for a reason uh, obviously to protect the pipe from any heat source you can buy uh, assembly tools for this job uh, laser do one in the UK which you can buy through Amazon and there are various versions available on aliexpress i'll put links to some in the description if you got value from this video consider supporting the channel in some way and i shall see you next time